Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir, please, we can see it. All right. So welcome again. Um, I'm supposed to teach you um, Java, um, how to program with Java. And object on your programming. We are supposed to do object oriented programming with Java. That is the course we are doing. Please, as much as possible, if you have a question to ask, you can unmute yourself and then ask whatever question you have. Okay. Um, don't wait till just once we are there and you have a question to ask, you can ask whatever question you want. But only unmute yourself to ask the question. Don't unmute so that the noise would be a distraction. We really don't need that. So let's start our course. In order to understand why we are learning Java, we must understand the paradigms of programming. There are three ways in which we write program. There are more. But for our purposes, there are three main ways we write programs. We write programs using the linear way. We write programs using the object-oriented programming way. Or we can write programming using events. These are three very, very pertinent ways we can write programs with. The first one being the linear way means that I have to know the, okay so right I just spoke about the fact that you do not unmute if you have no question let his example be the last one so back to the course, there are three ways in which we program, the linear way, the object-oriented way, and then the event handling way. The linear way, and that, that way of programming, I am looking at the actions that people perform. I'm looking at the way people do things and I am coding the way they do things. For example, if I was asked, if I asked you guys to write a program to add two numbers together, you would start by creating a container for the first number, creating a container for the second number, asking the user to enter number one, asking the user to enter number two, then creating a container to collect the sum of what they are doing, or this adding of the two numbers, and then you display the result to a particular user. You can see that with this form of programming, I am moving step by step, focusing on the actions an individual or a process will do, and I am writing with that flow. And that is the linear way. Now, under the linear way, there is a reason why you guys are learning programming courses like C++ or the C language, because the C++ on the C language were built using structured programming in mind, the linear way in mind. The object-oriented approach is a far more different approach. Under the object-oriented approach, we are looking at entities. We are asking ourselves, if I have an environment, if I have an environment, for example, if I have a school, who are the important people who play a role in the school. You would say student, you would say teacher, for example. Then you would ask, okay, 
if I have to call someone a student, if I have to define and say, okay, you are a student, what are the characteristics that make you a student? Oh, you have a, a, an ID, you have a name, you have a date of birth. If I want to call you a teacher in my school, in my environment, what makes you a teacher? Oh, you have a, a SNIT number, you have a name, you have probably a date of birth. What can a student do in my school? My students can enroll, my student can take an exam, exam. What can the teacher do in my school? My teacher can, or the teacher can teach a course. And then mark script. Under this form of coding, I am looking at entities and I am coding their characteristics or their attributes, and I am coding their actions. So that whenever I call upon a particular student, I would have to know his ID, name, date of birth, and once I know that this person is an actual student because I have these characteristics, I can then trigger the actions I want to perform. Now, under this way of programming, we look at languages which were built with object-oriented programming in mind. Programs which are built with object-oriented programming in mind are Java, C Sharp, The last way of programming allows us to view programming from the point of view whereby we are looking at events. What does an event mean? For example, on your screen now, if I click on one of the cell, it is highlighted. So on the event that I click on a cell, what should happen? On the event that I click on a login button, what should happen? On the event that I click on minimize, that is this button here, what should happen? That means that under events, you are coding based on specific predefined actions a user will do. It is here that you learn languages like VB and you learn languages like um, JavaScript. That means that in this course, our focus would be on object-oriented programming. Our focus will be on how we can write code that would showcase, first of all, an entity and tell us the entity's characteristics and the entity's actions. If you don't understand anything at this point, let me know. With that said, then let's continue. The first thing we are going to learn, and as you can see, we haven't started going into writing of code or um, we will get there. We must understand the principles of what we are about to do. 
once you understand, I can give you any question, I can give you any amount of time, and you'll be confident enough to do it because you know what you are doing. One very important thing we must understand is memory. And that is the next focus of our lecture today, memory. How do we save things in a computer? You see, one thing is true, that whenever you're using a computer, everything you do has to be saved somewhere. Whatever you do, it has to be saved somewhere. So if I have a computer, I would have a block of memory. So they call this a block. Now, a block of memory is made up of two very, very important aspects. The first aspect of importance in a block of memory, okay? The first aspect which is so important in a block of memory is the address. The second is the space itself, where the thing will be saved at the end of the day, where I will save the thing. So if, for example, I say n is equal to two, it means that in the computer, an address would be created. So here I would have an address being created for me. And once the address is created, in that address, a space would be created so that two would be put there. Now, why is this important? Why are we learning this? Or why should we be bothered with this? We should be bothered with this. It means that any time we create a particular variable, it means that a block of memory is broken off. An address is assigned to what we have created, and then that piece of information is placed there. So here for M, an address is created, and in that address, I'm going to put the three. Listen to the words I'm using. I didn't say I'm going to erase it or mount or something. I said I'm going to put the three. That means that if this value here changed from three to five, it means here I'm going to remove the three and put the five. The three goes away. In this section here, we have another one being it Z. And Z is going to be equal to whatever N is plus what? M. That means that I am going to look at this section here alone. And in this section here, I will pick whatever value that is N and whatever value that is M. Add them together and put it inside a space in which I'm going to create called Z. Remember, we are not doing maths. Now, this exercise is to demonstrate something important to you. What is it supposed to demonstrate? It's supposed to demonstrate to you that any time you create a variable, the computer creates a space to put that information in. The space that is being created is what we call the variable. The address 
is what we call the identifier. That means that this N, this M, this Z are all identifiers. They are all addresses. Now, you see, the problem is that if I come to you and say, oh, uh, 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 please add X003 to X004 and put it in X005, immediately, if I do that repeatedly, it becomes cumbersome. It becomes very difficult for me, the human being, to understand. It becomes very cumbersome for me, the human being, to follow. So for me, the human being to follow, I can not follow these addresses. So I need something so that I can reference the thing whenever I want to. I can reference two whenever I want to. I can reference five whenever I want to. I can reference seven whenever I want to because the computer uses these things here. That is these values here at the top. to reference its numbering or its values. So for me, I would use an identifier called N. I would use an identifier called M. And I would use an identifier called Z to mark where the value is being kept. So the statement here, this statement here, what I've just marked as red, if I was saying it in as English to you, I am saying assign n the value of two. In the computing terms, that means create a space called n and in that space put two there. It does not mean that this n is equal to two. No, because we are not doing maths. It means in memory, I have created a location where I can put two there. That is why this N here is called an identifier. And then the space, that's the thing is being kept. And remember, in that space, that thing can have any value at any time. It's called a variable. So whenever you are teaching students coding, you realize that they sometimes confuse and think M is a variable. M is not the variable. M is the identifier. The position where the five is being kept is the variable. But of course, if you go and tell students that they become confused very quickly, so the words become interchanged. So whenever you see uh, identify, you see variable, they tend to mean the same thing, but they are not. So if you take the example I used earlier over here, it means that in memory, a location is created called num1. And in num1, we are going to put the, whatever the user types, could be seven, could be 100, could be 10,000, could be 1 million. We really do not care about that. We really do not care about that. What we do care about is that whatever the user is going to type, there is a place that that piece of information is going to be kept. 
The next line here tells the computer that create another space for me and in that space put the cube. And finally, here we are telling the computer to create a space in memory and in that space, put in the summation of num1 and num2. That is, is going to give us seven. Mm. Please note something, that whenever you write statements that have the equal to in programming, unlike mathematics, you can never write them like this. You can, you can never, never say something like this. Um, th these two things come here, and then this come here. Because we can't put this in num1 plus num2. We, we can't do that. It doesn't work that way. Whatever values you have, they are going to be calculated, and the result is going to be a singular value. We are going to have one thing here. And that one thing you have is going to put in the going to be inputted in the address you find here. The question then comes in from a student. Why is it that we write int and num and double and car and string? Why do we write them? Because if it is an address, what's the end? What was the role of the int? What is the role of the num? What role do they play? in our code. You see, the computer is smart enough to know that it has to create a space for what you are bringing in. But how big should that space be? How big? Should the space be big enough for like this? If it's like this, it's, it's too small. So it has to be something like this. Because remember, you and I will always cry that our, our data is too much. It's too big. We want it small. We don't want to hold a lot of, we don't want our memory to be full. So the computer just can't keep a standardized space because sometimes the things are very, very small. Sometimes the things would be very, 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 very big. So it means it needs to have an appropriate size to keep the information in. That is the rule of the int, of the float, of the double, and of all of those figures. They tell the computer the information being brought to it, what type of data it is, for it to know how big of a space for it to prepare for it. Because without knowing how big or small the place should be, how will it know what to put in it? That brings us to a very important next question. If I have to write an identifier, what are the rules that govern me writing an identifier? If I have to write the names of my variables, the num1s and the n1s and the uh, uh, salary and all of those things, what rules govern the writing of them? Rule one, they must always start with a small letter. Rule two, they cannot start with a character. So when I say character, I'm talking about these things. They can't start with any of these things. 
The only character they can start with is an underscore. That is allowed. But apart from an underscore, they cannot start with anything else. You cannot leave spaces between them. So I can't write number space one. This is wrong. I can write number one. This is correct. But number space one is wrong. I cannot write gross salary. This is wrong. I can write gross salary like this or gross salary with a capital S to show where the next word begins. This is correct. Or I can write gross underscore salary. This is also correct. But the first one here is wrong. So the names I write, these are the understandings I should have for them. Remember that the names you write are addresses. So you can write any name you want. Anything you want to write, you can write. But it is advisable, and this is from one programmer to another, that the name you use makes sense to what you are doing. Because contrary to popular belief, you forget. Sometimes you forget your code. You wrote it, but you forget. Sometimes you write 10,000 lines, 15,000 lines, and before someone makes noise, relax. For this course, you write what if you what try the 13 lines and not 15 lines. You will not write anything, even getting to 100. But with that said, in profession, you would write 300 lines, 4,000 lines, 5,000 lines. Trust me, you forget and you forget quick. So when you are using words, make sure the words give you meaning of what you are doing. Or in English says, we'll say it gives you context. And that is the understanding of what is an identifier, what is a variable. Are there any questions so far? Please, if you have a question, ask. Do not be afraid of anybody or anyone, okay? Ask, because very soon I will not mind. <laughs> because I will not mind. But now we are starting, so I will mind you because I care about you now. But very soon, I will not mind. So, what questions do you have? Yeah, hello, sir. Yeah, hello. It is uh, Fatal Swimming. Okay, Fatal. Uh, I think uh, uh, the identifier, like example, norm one and norm two, you declare them by giving them an integer, but the sum, you didn't declare them either a double or an integer. So do we need to just use a double or we need to declare uh, like a, a, an integer for it, like a data type for it? Suleiman, sir. can you see the screen? Yes, sir. Do you see what I've highlighted? Ah, uh, okay, 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 in some, okay. Okay, Suleiman, thank you so much. Um, Felix Lillis. <laughs> Please, the variable name, can I start with a dollar sign? Felix, is a dollar sign, please. Felix, can you hear me? Yes, please. Is a dollar sign a character? No, please. The dollar sign is not a character? Yes, please. Are you sure the dollar sign is not a character? I would say it's a special character. A brand here, a character. Special now the town and Sasashi. A brand here. A character. Special and when Sasashi. What's your name? Okay. So let me ask the question again. Is the dollar sign a character? 
Yes, yeah, correct. Good. So do we start our variables of characters? Yes, no. please. Eh, eh, eh. The, the name of the variable. I just showed you that if you have these characters here, you cannot start your variable with them. The only thing you can start with is if they are letters. So you can see that over here, I have letters. Anything, all the, the letters in primary, 26 and other 28 in primary, three, but all the letters you can find, those, anything that you can use to write a name, you can use that. The only thing oh. in which you can use is the underscore. Okay. But everything else is a character, so you can't use it. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Or let me rephrase. You cannot use it in Java. Very, very important. In Java. Good. Okay, sir. Now, Mr. Boating, Samson. What's your yes, sir. Please, I wanted to ask. So, is it that a uh, Java and then C sharp is the only real object oriented programming language? Java and C sharp are the object oriented programming languages that you will be taught. Okay, okay, okay. That's number one. And number two, Java and C Sharp are the programming languages that when the developers were building it, they built it using the principles of object-oriented programming. We'll get there, whereby we talk about encapsulation and polymorphism and, and, and inheritance and abstraction. Those principles were built with the language from the beginning. But in your school life, those are the languages you will learn. Is that okay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank, thanks very much. Not sure. Any more questions? If there are no more questions, let us proceed to talk about the next piece of information, which is very important to us. I have been told that you guys are going to be using Intendu as your editor. Are you guys aware? Yes, sir. Before I go to use the intelligence. So please come again. The programming editor you guys are using for the course is IntelliJ. Yes, sir. We are aware that you'll be using the IntelliJ. Thank you very much. So we have all installed the IntelliJ. Yes. Have we installed it? Yes, sir. So... <laughs> okay, well. well. How some of you are behaving, means not all of you have installed it. Please install the intelligence because that is the editor we'll be using for the course. Is that, is that clear? Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, So I'm talking about this in Kelly G. Yeah. Um, one second, please. I, I have to charge my PC. So one second, okay? Okay. Sir. Yes, I see. 
Can I see you? Yes. How much? The Samsung. No. I Change your left or right side. You take it up. Take your move. All right, ahead. Yeah, you know, get yeah. No, I get here. Yeah. I I am very surprised that Asamwa Yeboah, that he actually unmuted his mic to let us know how his day is going. I'm very surprised. But you let's continue. Yeah. Desmond, do you have a question? I don't have a question. It's a mistake. So I'm saying. And then, uh, Bidi Akun, do you also have a question? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Hello, sir. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Um, please, last week, you said Visual Studio. So I'm asking, what if we've already downloaded the Visual Studio? In Download IntelliJ. OK. OK. Now on your screen here, you see um, the process to downloading IntelliJ, okay? So you just click on the download button and then you download the community one because that one is free and then um, get it set up, okay? That is the editor we'll be using for our course. That is what we would be using for our course, the entire course, that is all we'll be using. So just make sure you get it installed before um, our next meeting. Is that okay? Now with that in mind, um, we would begin our course by learning some very, very simple principles. How would I display something in Java? How will I um, if I wanted to display something in Java, how will I do that? Or how will I get that accomplished? Okay, so we're going to begin by learning that. And before we get into the coding and then all of that, let's begin with our slide and then learn that. Then next week, once everybody has it installed, we can do it together and then enjoy. So for today, my main purpose was supposed to teach you what are data types, what are variables, and then what is an operator and make us understand what these things are. That was my main goal today. Now, of course, if I want to write an application in Java, I would first of all have to write a class and then my main method and then I would write system.out.println. So that is what I need to write. Let's see why I need to write those things, okay? And I don't know why Comfort also drew lines on the screen. Comfort, why did you draw lines on the screen? You draw an X because you didn't want to come to class today. Oh, God, me, God. I was watching you draw the lines on like that. Why is she drawing lines on the screen? Yeah. 
Anyway, let's leave that for comfort since come and tell us why. So um, the first thing we have to do is we'll click on File and New and click on New um, Project. Are we okay? So once you click that, so this is the view you will get. Is that okay? So if I want to create a new project, I'll click File and then New Project. Most of you, once you start your, um, once you start your your IntelliJ, you'd see new projects there. So just click on New Project. Then in here, we need to give the name of the project in which we want to do. Note that the name of the project we want to do will serve as our class name. Okay, will serve as our, like our environment. So it is always best that the name. Which you know, we Yeah, sorry about that. I think I got cut off for some reason. So I'm back. Can you hear me? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can hear you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So we will just give the name of our project. In this case, I'm going to call the project class one for our first class and then if you want to create a git repository you can remember that the programming language we are using is java and then we are using this sdk now this sdk we can find it from the advanced um, once you come here, it shows you the SDKs you have been using. But if you don't see this SDK here, you can click on download SDK. Okay, it'll take a few minutes for you to check online and make sure you are there. We are using the advanced. So here, I'll click here. We are using this, the advanced, this one, the advanced open SDK. That is what we'll be using for our course. Of course, I have it downloaded already, so I don't have to do anything else. And then I can click on Create after that. So do I want it in a new window? Yes, I want it in a new window. And then I can have that project opening up here for me. OK, so this is what I see. This is what I get. OK. So the person asking, yes, you tick all the boxes when you are installing the um, uh, IntelliJ. Just make sure you select Java as the programming language of your choice. Now on the side menu here, our project is created for us. In the SRC, we can see that we have a temporal file created for us for our main file. Next week, when we come back and we learn about classes, then I'll show you how we can create multiple classes. But for now, we are just going to use this class just like how it is. Now, in here, we can write our code to display something onto our console screen. So we start with the keyword system. Please note the spelling of the system. Note that when I spelt it, the S is capital. The S is capital because it is a class. We can see that here, because this is the main class, it starts with a capital M, and this one not being a class, it starts with a small M. You remember that uh, when I was telling you how to name your variables, I told you that we do not start the variable names with a capital letter. Or if something has a capital letter in your code, then that means that that thing is a class. So here we have system, 
where which is a class dot out dot print. Now there are lots of print class print uh, methods that we can fetch for. Okay, we can print ln or we can just print normally like that. Print ln means that when you are done printing, moves to a new line. And I think that is great because it will make our thing stand um, clean. And since comfort was nice enough to draw an X on the screen for us, let's use comfort as a name. Yeah, I'm Simon, what's your question? Hey, sir, please. My question is, is about the test case you are talking about. Because uh, I also know we have programming test cases. One is the snake case. We have the Pascal. We have the camel case. And then we have the kebab case. So I it is like when you understand. are using I one. I don't think I've mentioned back case here. So I don't understand what you're saying. What do you mean by no, case? No, 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 please. I, 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 I didn't mention back case. I'm, I'm mentioning the test cases. What test it's case? Like we, we have a snake case. Uh, when when writing wait wait wait, wait it is wait. like wait what test when writing maybe letters or words uh, the, the, in the form of case it should be maybe upper case lower case maybe and uh, that is what I, I'm 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 trying to put here okay and then your question is what yes uh -huh. and and I, I was saying. Uh, we, we have type of cases. So when writing v variables, you can actually also uh, de decide uh, using one. So whenever you use that particular one, whenever anybody sees in your program, he or she is going to know, okay, these are the cases you use for all your variables. Maybe when you use another for maybe a class, when anybody sees, he or she knows, okay, these test cases are only the classes that you're having in your program. Okay. Let me see if I can answer your question correctly. What you are saying is that um, uh, the cases that you are talking about being uppercase and lowercase, you can choose if you want to use uppercase for your for your names or lowercase, so that the signs is it is it, it acts like something like a, a a calling call or a mark for you for you to see that if it is like this, then it is my code or something like that. That's what you are saying, right? Yes, yes, sir. yes, sir. yes, sir. Now, you see, the problem with what you are saying is this. This, this, this is what you are, the problem of what you are saying. In code, yeah, in code, there are things in which you call conventions. Now, you see, once you stray away from the conventions, you are on your own. That means that you alone can read whatever you are doing. There's a reason why we use capital letters. There's a reason why you would use a small letter. If you want to make a calling call, something like a logo or something, you can create some code snippet or something, or that there's a, an algorithm in which only you know or something to create your own calling call. That's fine. But the moment you go into naming and using naming as your calling call, it is a problem. Because at this point in time in what we are doing today being the first day, okay, it is very important we learn some fundamental rules. Over here, we can see the word class here. After class, what follows it is a capital M A I N. This means that anytime I see something with a capital M like that, it is a class. We can see that over here we have a method. How do I know it's a method? Because it starts with a small letter. Now if I give you, and very soon I will do that, I would give you code and tell you to tell me if it is true or false or what answer you would get. If I start to mix that, it will be difficult for you to know which one is a class, which one is a method, which one should you call, which one shouldn't you call. It becomes difficult to read. So 
What I'll tell you again is this. Before you start making calling calls for yourself and putting in code and leaving your mark, master it first and understand why each thing is done and it is done in a particular way. Then from then, if you have your own code, you are writing and you're in your house and only you will read it, you can do it like that and there, there is nothing wrong. But again, remember that we are talking about convention and convention is very important, especially if you work with someone or in an organization. Are we okay? Okay, so now let's come back to what we are doing. Today, we learned what a variable is. We've learned all of that. Now we are learning how we can display something. And I was saying that if I want to display something, I need to bring in the system keyword. If I type the system like this, it means something totally different. You can see that immediately my code has given me a red mark here. It means that I am trying to create either a method or a variable. I am not referring to something the system knows. I am referring to this, whereby it is system dot out. It's the system um, um, class. We can see it written here boldly, the system class. Now in the system class, there is something in there called out. The same way that in the what you're seeing on the screen here, in the main class, there is something in there called the main method. So in main, there's small main. In system, there is something there called out. And then in that out, there is something called um, print LL, LN. Now in print LN, you can put in the string for you to display whatever you want to display. So in here, I want to display, let's say um, class today. That's what I want to display. Now, once I have my code set, I can run my code. How can I run my code? I can click on the buttons here, the green buttons here, or there's a button at the top here in which I can click on. If I click on that, at the bottom, my code would run and then show for me. And I can see that over here, I have class today nicely written for me. Remember that in displaying it, everything I write here is being written in a string, which means the double quotes are keeping everything as they are. That is, if I leave, if I remove the space here, it will display as it is supposed to display, as it is. So you will see here, I would have class today, no space. If I make a spelling mistake here, and then I run it, it will run. It will not tell me it is an error because I am displaying what I want to display. I am displaying what I want the user to show. It is none of the computer's business. If I make a mistake or a spelling mistake over here, you can see immediately it turns red and then it tells me I'm doing something wrong. But inside the two parentheses here, inside the double code, I can display whatever I want to display because it is my code. It is my mine. I am displaying what I want to display. I hope that is clear. Yes, sir. In there, I can display whatever I want. I can just, I can create a line under it. In there, I can create another system dot out dot print. And then I can put something in here in which I want. Let's say two. So if I was to run this, I would have it displaying in the way I wanted it to display. What do I mean by that? What do I mean by the way I wanted it to display? Look at it from this point of view. I can see that I start from here, this line, line three, okay? System.out.println. That statement means that 
display whatever that is in here. When you are done, move to a new line. So you can see that it displays it and moves to a new line. In the new line, I'm telling it to display this. And when it is done, it should move to a new line. So you can see it displays it and moves to a new line. And then I'm saying display two. And when you are done, move to a new line. So you can see displays two and moves to a new line. If I was supposed to remove the LN from there so that it is just print, it means that I am not moving to a new line every time I print. So we can see everything being on one line. Display and presentation is very important, especially to an IT person. How something looks, how something feels is very, very important. So the code that we write, the code that we execute, how the things would be displayed, how the things would be viewed is very, very important. Now, in a game, using the example we saw, that is a program to add two numbers. How am I going to write this piece of code? Remember what we did? We needed to create a space to hold the two numbers the user is going to enter. So I need a space to hold the number one. I need a space to hold the number two. I need another space to hold the summation of these two numbers. It is very important we understand these principles. It is at these points whereby we as coders or people beginning to learn how to code, we get difficult or we get difficulties. In. These do not stand there for the numbers. These stand there for where the user will put the numbers when they are using our application so that we can refer to them and utilize them. Now, here is another portion where students get and then they become, they do not understand. When I say read number one, and when I say read number two, or if I say input number one, or input number two, or I say get number one, or get number two, I am asking you to do two things. Remember what the Bible says ask and you shall receive. That means that if you don't ask, you would not receive. Now, before I execute this, there is something I have to do here. That is, I have to create an object of the scanner class. Now, the scanner class is what we use to bring information from the console screen into our code. So here I have the scanner class. And I have to create a variable to act as the scanner class. That is, I have to create an object of the scanner class. And we'll look at this into detail next week. So here I have created an object of the scanner class, but it does not have all of the properties of the scanner class. So I use the keyword new and I use the keyword scanner class to give me all the properties of the scanner class. Now that I have all the properties of the scanner class, I can then proceed to do what I wanted to tell you guys about. Here, if I write the following code, number one is equal to the scanner class, which is now the object display dot 
By the way, the display is just a word. I could easily change this word from display to let's say connect. And that means here you have to be now connect. It is just a word, okay? When I bring the dots here, we can see that because it is a class, it has properties. And one of the properties is to get the next word, integer. Why am I getting the next integer? Because number one is an integer. That's why I'm getting the next integer. So if I run this piece of code here and I come to the bottom again, I see nothing. Sensibly, the code is running. To you, they're like, how is it running? It is. I said, collect something for my screen. So over here, it is waiting for me to type something, press enter for it to be collected. Why does this not make sense? Because if you come and you see the screen dark like that, you do not know what you want to do. You do not know what you have to do. So whenever I say read, get, ask, those kind of words, I'm asking you, first of all, to ask the user for the information. So here I have system.out.println. No, I'm going to do print here. And then here I'm going to say enter number one, leave a space and a semicolon. And then I will run this piece of code. And we would realize that when it pops up again, and you click the cursor, there is a space here for you to type what you want to type. Why didn't I use Ellen? Because if I use Ellen, it will come to the bottom and it will not look nice for me. Why did I leave space here and here? So that there will be spaces here for the person to see where they are typing. Every single thing you do, every single thing you type must make meaning to what you're doing. So it means that if I type something here, let's say 12 and I press enter, the value 12 here is going to be given to number one using the uh, scanner class connect here. Then because it is an integer, it will accept it because there's no problem. For me to get the second piece of information that is number two, I will do the same thing. Over here, I'll just change it to two. And over here, I'll just change this to what? Two. Now, at this point in my code, sorry, at this point in whatever I am doing, I have two things. I have what the person has entered. The person has entered number one. The person has entered number two. So I have them. That means that it is at this point in time in my code, and only at this point in time in my code, in which I can say sum is equal to number one plus what? Number two. And it is after this that I can say system dot out dot print ln, because I don't want it to go to the bottom, and say sum is equal to then I use a plus to join it to what? The sum. This sum here is the variable. This sum here is in double quotes. That means I want to display how it is. When I click the plus button, the play button here, and I come back down to my code here, I can see, oh, I have an error. I didn't bring a semicolon here, sorry. Run again. Thank you. So here I can type 12, can type another 12, and it tells me that my sum is 24. Now, if I have mastery or if I have mastered how I can display the things I want to display, if I have mastered how I can show the information I need to show, then it means that I can write my code in such a way whereby it makes more meaning to whoever who is using that piece of code. What do I mean? Here, if I was to type something like this, number one, and it is not in code, which means that I am, I am displaying the, the value of number one. And over here, I bring the plus, but I bring a double quote and put plus in the middle. 
I bring plus here to join it to number two. And then I bring the plus again, then I bring the double code, give a space and bring equal to, and bring the plus again and type there sum. Of this, if I run my piece of code again, and I was to type 13 here and 14 here, another 13, I have 13 plus 13 is equal to 26. Now the displaying and the control of how I display my work is showing in how it displays. Install your um, IntelliJ, set it up. Make sure it is set up. That is your only assignment for today. Your class rep will create a group that I would be in and I'll put in your notes and stuff. Please do not put any messaging or anything in the group. The notes, the links for the classes and all of those things, I'll put them there for you. Starting next week, we are going to dive into Java some more. So we'll start by learning what is a class, how we can build our own classes. Then we'll take questions and see how we'll solve the questions using if statements, for statements, and we'll move on from there. Class will always start at 2.30. We will not start at 2.05 or anything else. Now, as you can see, before we started the class, I did not say anything about rules and do's and don'ts and all of those things. Because in my mind, I am assuming you are adults. So if I have to tell you what you have to do, I don't think that is right. And in my mind, I will respect you. I will respect your views. I will respect everything in which you say. Now, I expect the same thing from you. This thing whereby when I'm teaching, then you'd unmute and come back and all of those things are disrespectful. They are not just disrespectful for me. They are disrespectful to your friends. This thing whereby whilst I'm teaching and there is a pause, you'd unmute and make noise and then unmute back. And in your mind, you have done something. You have achieved something. I don't know, but it is the word disrespectful. Now, is it my job to come and tell you, hey, don't do this and don't do that? It really isn't. But I've taken note of those people who did that. And they will lose marks. Starting next week, as I said, we are going to build ourselves slowly. One piece of advice I'll give you before we close is that a lot of people find programming difficult. It's because one, they don't have good fundamentals. Two, they don't know anything about problem solving. And three, they just don't practice. Practice the code. I know me saying this is cliche and it sounds weak, but you do not become good at something if you don't practice. Do not see the assignments and things as strong. See them as ways you can improve your coding skills. And the final thing I should say is because of the nature of this course, you need someone to point to you when you have errors in your code. So I have no problem with you messaging me or sending me your code and telling me I should have a look at it or what is wrong or anything like that. I have no problem. But do not call me at eight o'clock at the night. <laughs> you can call me at any time you want. But the moment the clock strikes eight o'clock in the night, don't call me. You can message, I may reply or I may not reply, but don't call me at eight o'clock. 
You can call me in the morning, any time you can call. By eight o'clock, don't call. I, I hope that is clear. And if you want okay. to yes. AM or PM? A brand here, PM, na AM, the idea, sorry. <laughs> If you want to know why you shouldn't call me at that time, whatever you are doing at eight o'clock, if you are at church meeting at eight o'clock, I am also at church meeting at eight o'clock. If you are in the club at eight o'clock, I'm also in the club. Whatever you are doing at eight o'clock, I'm doing the same thing at that same time. So don't call me. But any other time else, you can call me and send me slippers of your code, and I have no problem answering your questions. Because the job of us here is to learn how to code. Remember what I said, that I will always be on time. I will never be late. So the class will always start on time. And the word in which I want you to understand is respect. Respect for me, respect for you, respect for the other people who are in the class. Outside the class, whatever you do is your business. I honestly don't care. But whilst we are here, there is a certain level of discipline and respect I expect. Now, thank you so much for popping up and then listening to me for, I think, an hour and a half or something. Next week, we will continue and next week, we'll be having question after question and solving them. And as you can see, I can explain every single line of code I write. So it means you also have to explain every single code in which you write by the end of the course. See you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. What size? Size laptop. The Windows has to install. Yeah. I see you again. <laughs>